Well, good morning and welcome to worship here at St. James. It's a pleasure to be able to worship with you this morning. Holy, 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 today we celebrate the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us just take a moment of holy silence as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And we'll have the New Testament reading. but it's not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sons. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit it's himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. I invite you to say the psalm with me by the half verse. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all say, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, who came to Jesus. Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I told you about earthly things and you do not believe them, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son. And just as Moses was lifted up in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For so God loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And bowing our heads for a moment, let us pray. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for this time to worship. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to draw closer to your holy seat, to your throne, and be able to worship you more fully. We pray this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, a few years ago, I had the pleasure of taking uh, my youngest daughter uh, to a zoo, or pardon me, my oldest daughter to a zoo, and we got to see all these uh, different animals that she'd only ever seen in picture books. And I remember there was one animal, I can't quite remember what it was, and she looked at it, and she hadn't seen it before. She said, Daddy, what is that? And I responded to tell her what the animal was, say it was a, 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 a llama. So I said, oh, it's a llama. And then she said, well, what, what about the llama? Like, who is this llama? So there's a little plaque there by the animal. So we read about the llama, and the llama actually had a name, and it told about what the llama ate and what the llama liked to do, and um, she got to know a little bit about the llama. She asked these two questions. There's the, the what is that, and, and then who is that? These two separate questions. What is a question of essence? If you looked at me and you said what, you might say a human being. If you looked at me and said who, it'd be a different set of answers. You'd be able to, this is Robert Porter, born in Balville at such and such a time. These were his parents, his brothers and sisters. Uh, this is where he lived. You get into a whole bunch of details of uh, uh, the specifics of, of my life. So there's two questions you can ask of someone, the what, which is essence, and the who, which is about their personhood. And the same thing applies to our God. These same questions, the what, essence question, and the who, person question. So when we look up and we say, what is this, the essence question, the answer is God. The only difference, of course, between a category of essence in this world and the category of God is that in this world, there's almost always somebody else in that category. You say, that's a human being. There's six billion other human beings that also fit in that category. There's a llama, but there's millions of other llamas that fit in that category. When we speak of God and we say, what is, what is he? What is the essence of God? He's God. And nobody else is in that category. Nobody else can even, as even ascend or try to reach that category. There's only one place, and he fills it entirely. And then the second question is, who? And that's a question of personhood, of identity, of distinctness within essence. And that question is answered by God when he says, I am God the Father, I am God the Son, and I am God the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is a, a, a remarkable um, piece of our uh, understanding of Christianity. It is a hallmark uh, of Christianity. And it's also, in, in one hand, uh, simple and also deeply complex. You can go a little way in, and then it gets really complicated. Uh, there's one theologian that said, uh, if you speak more than two minutes on the Trinity, you're probably reaching into uh, uh, heresy. So I'm not going to get too much into the details of the Trinity, although there are lots of stuff to understand, lots and lots of books that have been written, really good stuff. The point is that God has shown himself to us. He isn't just far away sitting in a category of essence saying, I am God. He has revealed himself to us. I am Father. I am Son. I am Holy Spirit. God has shown himself to us. And that's why today when we gather for worship, we say, holy, holy, holy. When we're saying, holy, 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 we are um, joining with not only a bunch of Christians around the world, uh, we're showing up to another kind of worship. Don't know if you've ever thought about this, but every time you come to worship, whenever you get there, uh, you're either a little bit early or a little bit late. Because worship is always going on. And I don't just mean in this world, but I mean uh, in the heavenly realm. Even when we don't feel like worship, or we're not able to gather, worship is taking place in the heavenly realms. In fact, it says in Scripture that right now, there are those bowing before the throne of God. 
And there's these creatures that are described in Scripture called seraphs. Uh, We don't know a lot about them, but Scripture says they've got six wings. And with two of them, they cover their eyes. Why? Because they cannot look on the glory of God, or they'd be consumed. And they are, they are surrounding the throne of God, and the words that we get for, those, for this, uh, the hymn, Holy, 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 are from the lips of the mouths of the seraphs. They are now in heaven, gathered around the throne of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, speaking these words, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty, the Lord of the heavens of hosts. Holy is he. The earth is filled with his glory. There is a preacher you may have heard of, uh, John Chrysostom. Excellent. He's from ages ago. But if you can find a sermon of his, read it. And if you can find all of them, read them. He's an amazing preacher. He holds no punches back. uh, And he speaks very clearly and plainly. He was given the name, uh, the nickname, Golden Tongue because he was able to speak to people in such a way that they not only heard what he was saying, but they were able to ingest it. When he got up to speak in his churches, there was silence. Because people wanted to hear the words from his mouth about God. Right now in heaven, the seraphs around God's throne speak. And when they speak, the whole house It says trembles. The very pillars of the house shake when they say, holy, holy, holy. God is a holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This worship that takes place of the divine God, of the triune God in heaven, happening right now, is more real than anything in this world. That form of worship taking place in heaven is the purest kind. It is by which we model whatever we do here on earth of worship from what is going on in heaven. May what is happening there be happening here. And when these seraphs speak and they say, holy, 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 covering up their eyes, and the, the house is shaking with the thunder of their voice, They are just an infinitesimally small response to God. When God speaks, (laughs) the psalm says what what it's like when God speaks. I mean, these seraphs are speaking, but it's it's just a tiny little glimpse of what it is like when the triune God speaks. The psalmist tells us that when God speaks, creation comes into being. When the triune God speaks, light forms out of nothing. He has this this power, this creative energy that is beyond our understanding. No king or, or, or president or prime minister or anybody with all the power in the world can do anything like this. God has such power by speaking. The psalmist says that he reminds us of the power of God, of priests, prophets, and kings in the Old Testament. When they heard God, they their natural response was fear. Not that they were going to be consumed, but my gosh of the awesome presence of the triune God. And they responded with such humility because he was their maker. He spoke with such authority. I don't know if you enjoy being out in the world, out in creation, but there's some magnificent places uh, to, to see in this world, even in our little section here of, of Canada, of Ontario. Um, my wife and I love to go down. There's a uh, place nearby, the Adirondack Mountains, um, and love to go hiking. And there's a, the, one of these mountains we went up called Wright Peak. And it's, uh, it's about, I think, three and a half or four hours to get to the, to the top of it. it its elevation is uh, 4,500 feet. And when you get up to there, it's bald, and you can see for miles and miles you can see the, almost all the mountain ranges and the valleys and the lakes, and it, it is so majestic. It is so majestic. It, it, it is radiating beauty. It, it, and it has, it's not just beauty, but it's, it's like a dignity. And it, it's an impressive beauty, an impressive dignity. And I don't know where you've been that you, you see this um, 
magnificence reflected in, in the created world. If we took all of those places that we all think are magnificent and we added them all together and we showed the, put them beside the magnificent of God, there would be like a grain of sand. God is so magnificent that he puts everything in this world that we ascribe magnificence to, to shame. It's not that it isn't beautiful or magnificent, but compared to him, it's not even a whisper. The triune God is so magnificent and worthy of our praise. The voice of God speaks. We hear the voice of God, the Son, joined with human flesh in Jesus Christ. And when Jesus spoke, we hear the voice of the triune God speaking. He speaks, and the power of the Holy Spirit comes into being in our world. When Jesus speaks to the dead and raises them, it is the power of the Holy Spirit. When he speaks to diseases and he cures them, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. When he speaks into the hearts of the believers, to transform them. It is the power of the Spirit. You see, when the triune God speaks, he speaks with such authority. I just think about this in my own life. When you, when you think about God speaking, and you're reading his word, or maybe you felt a, a voice within you, maybe you've heard an audible voice. Most of the time, it's reading God's word that, we, that we're able to, to hear from him. Our bodies respond to him even when we don't know it <laughs> our, our ears perk up when the triune god speaks our, our souls become a little more alive as they open up to hear him to hear the majestic voice of the triune god we become more alive as we ingest his words when we hear Jesus speak a blessing over his people, we hear the triune God speaking a blessing over his people. And when we hear that blessing and receive it, we receive a blessing from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christianity is clear about who God is. There are many different ways in this world to look and seek spiritual things. But Christianity is clear, and we are unashamedly clear. We know who God is as essence, and we proclaim who he is as person, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We do not pretend that he is so magnificent that we cannot know his mysteries, though he is always clouded in mystery. We know because he's revealed he desires us to know him. And the only way to do that is to know him as person. You know, if we just know him as essence, as God, how can you draw close to essence? We draw close to person. We can draw close to Father, draw close to Son, draw close to Holy Spirit. So I just encourage you, A, in your worship, to recall and remember that we worship a magnificent God who has a voice that is so powerful, it calls into being things that were not. He speaks with such authority that everything in the world turns in response to him. The triune God who is absolutely magnificent. And I just want to encourage you. I, you know, sometimes in our life we, we get looking at a particular person of the Trinity. Uh, for many in liturgical traditions, we often are looking at Father. Um, and, and then sometimes, you know, we spend some time looking at Son, particular times of the year, and sometimes a little less so about Holy Spirit. But they're all equal. So I just want to encourage you, if you've been um, habitually praying to Father, why not try praying to the Son or the Holy Spirit? Or you're always praying to our Lord Jesus. Why not, why not try praying to Father or to Holy Spirit? If when you're reading God's word, you're always thinking about what Jesus is doing, why not read God's word and think about what Father's doing or what the Holy Spirit is doing? And maybe when you read books, you read Christian books to, to uplift and build your faith, why not read a book that's specifically about one person of the Trinity that you don't know a lot about? You see, 
By growing in our understanding of each member of the Trinity, we are able to draw closer to God. And he wants us close. He desires us to be close. You know, when we're just, when we're just praying to Father, and, that's, and, and, and God the Father takes up all of our understanding of who God is, we're missing the richness and depth of a relationship that is much more profound and wholesome. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I just invite you and encourage you to explore relationship and building relationship specifically with the persons of the Trinity who you don't or haven't grown close to before. He is magnificent. He wants us to know him. He has revealed himself to us, and he is worthy of all of our praise. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll have the prayers. Let us pray. At the beginning of each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite your response of, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the church, that we may see the glory and unity of the Trinity as one God, creator, father, redeemer, son, and sanctifier, Holy Spirit, one God in power, in essence, in substance, and co-eternal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, send down on those who hold public office in Canada, especially our Prime Minister and the Houses of Parliament, all who govern provincially and municipally, the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well-being of all people. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for peace in the world, especially in places where violence, turmoil, and discord exist. We pray for the Middle East and all the countries in that area. We especially pray at this time for Israel and Palestine. Guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the world, that in tranquility your kingdom may advance till all the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord. our prayer. Lord, we pray for our families, friends, and loved ones. Bless our homes that your love may rest upon us. Teach us to love one another as you have commanded. Help us to bear each other's burdens with confident reassurance of your love towards each and every one of us. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Father, regard with your tender compassion those suffering from anxiety, depression, and mental illness, and those through addictions have lost their health and freedom. Restore to them the assurance of your unfailing mercy. Remove from them the fears that beset them and strengthen them in body, soul, and spirit as they progress through the work of their recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, sustainer of life and source of our hope, 
comfort and relief all who endure long-term illnesses or persistent handicaps. We pray for the people of India from afar and those in, in other areas of the world who are deprived for the necessities of life. And we pray for those close at hand. We pray for your children at the Kempville Retirement Living and Bayfield Manor. And we pray for those within our congregation. Give grace to all who minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weaknesses and have confidence in your loving care. I now invite each and every one of you to pray for those who are on your heart at this time. We pray for Avalon, Hal, Verna, Grenville, George, Harold, India, Nancy, Norma Jean, Jim, Gwyn, and Pam. Holy, holy, holy God, fill us with strength and courage, with discernment and compassion, that we may be your instruments of justice and love in this world, that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, receive these our prayers and transform us through them that we may have eyes to see and hearts to understand not only what you do on our behalf, but what you call us to do as we walk in unity with you, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the prayer for Trinity Sunday, Father, we praise you. Through your word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. You reveal salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and your love. Fill us with a vision of your glory that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join me. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us this week. I just pray that you would be blessed to know the Trinity more deeply as you grow in faith. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.